Hello everybody! Welcome to TNTW Studios. I know you all may be a little confused on the title of this video, but let me explain. Today is June 28, written out, if you're an American, as 628. Today is a niche holiday that only me and a few others recognize, called Tau Day. And I wanted to share with you all a video essay I did for my English class a while back this year about Tau. Most of you probably find this boring, but please give it a shot. Trust me, this random math concept is deeper than you may think. Also, we flew past 100 subscribers, and now we're on this road to 200 subscribers. So please, if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button and subscribe. So, sit back, grab your favorite snack, and enjoy. So I'm sure you all remember pie, right? Not the delicious dessert, but that number from your middle school math class. 3.141592. Pi is defined as the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. But hang on a second. A circle is defined by its radius, not its diameter. So why is pi the star of the show? Enter tau, the less known superior in the mathematical world. What is tau? It's simply 2 pi, or 6.283183. You may be wondering why this is even being brought up. Why should we use tau instead of pi? And why are we talking about math in an English class? Well, I have an answer to all of those questions, except for the last one. So let's start with the math. Pi is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. But when you're dealing with circles, it's more common to use the radius. This is because a circle is literally defined as a set of points equally distant from a center point. The length between those points is the radius. To show how pi works, let's do an example. Let's say you have a circle with a radius of 21, which would make the diameter 42, and a circumference of about 132. Take the circumference and then divide it by the diameter. Look familiar? Now let's do the same thing with the radius. And that right there is tau. Okay, now let's talk about fractions of a circle. This is where tau's superiority comes to fruition. You see, with pi, it's quite confusing. Half of a circle is pi, a twelfth of a circle is pi sixths, and a whole circle is two pi. Now enter tau. Half a circle is tau half. A twelfth of a circle is tau twelfths. And a full circle is simply tau. It just makes more sense, doesn't it? But it doesn't just make sense. It's overall much more pretty. It makes dense and difficult mathematical equations more concise and easier to comprehend. But why should this be important to anyone who isn't a crazy mathematician? Consider this. When we're teaching students about circles, we want them to grasp the fundamental concepts effortlessly. Using tau simplifies these concepts to align more closely with how we naturally perceive circles through their radii. And here's the kicker. I'm not crazy, and this isn't some wild idea I came up with. There's been a whole movement to get tau into mathematics ever since the written works of Bob Pallas and Pi is Wrong and Michael Hartle and Tau Manifesto. The people who follow this movement call themselves Taoists and have formed an almost cult-like following. They're not making this up, and they've got a point. And if we delve a bit deeper into the historical context, Pi has been ingrained in our mathematical education for centuries. It's in the textbooks, it's in the formulas, and it's in the minds of students around the world. But does that make it right? The history of Tao reveals that it easily could have been the chosen one. Archimedes himself used a fraction of Tao in his work showing that the idea of Tau has been lingering in the background for a long time. Actually, Tau as a concept has been quite ambiguous in the sense that plenty of people can't even agree on the name Tau for it. People have proposed the term turn. Robert Pallas suggested a similar symbol to pi, but with three legs. Thomas Caligonetis had the idea of using theta, but when Michael Hartle suggested the Greek letter of Tau, it caught on more than any of the other suggestions. From then on, Tau has started to implement itself into society. Websites like Khan Academy, 
Desmos graphing calculator, and even Google have made Tau available to use. And programming languages such as Python, Rust, and Java have even implemented Tau. Let's go back to the basics. The Pi versus Tau debate matters because Pi is taught as the be all and end all in mathematics, while Tau is just simply left in the shadows. You've probably been told Pi is the only correct way to do these formulas, but that's an inaccurate story. Schools should, at the very least, acknowledge the existence of Tau. Many mathematicians actually prefer Tau, but the status quo of Pi makes it a hesitant subject to discuss. So what have we learned from this exploration to the mathematical constants? That it's not just about numbers, it's about the stories we tell with those numbers. The narrative of Pi has dominated the mathematical stage for so long that questioning it feels like challenging a fundamental truth. But as we've seen, truth can evolve, and sometimes it can take a fresh perspective, like in the context of Tao, to reveal a more elegant truth. Challenging the narrative of Pi as the sole ruler of circles opens the door to a more intuitive understanding of mathematics. Tao deserves a seat at the table, and maybe it's time for educational institutions to reconsider the story they've been telling us about circles and embrace the mathematical elegance of Tao. After all, Tao's practicality and elegance might just make it a worthy contender in our mathematical vocabulary.